Friends, this is Democracy Now!, democracynow.org, The War and Peace Report. I'm Amy Goodman. And I'm Juan Gonzalez. Welcome to all of our listeners and viewers around the country and around the world. Thirty activists with Greenpeace remain jailed in Russia and face possible piracy charges one week after they were detained during a peaceful protest against Arctic oil drilling. Many of the Greenpeace activists are appearing in a Russian court today. A freelance photographer and a Greenpeace spokesperson, uh, uh, Roman Dogov, have just been ordered to be jailed for two months. On September 18th, Greenpeace activists attempted to scale Russia's first Arctic offshore oil platform. A nearby Russian Coast Guard ship with agents masked uh, on board responded. Uh, the Russians re proceeded to ram and slash the Greenpeace inflatable boats, sprayed the activists with water cannons, and fired warning shots. They detained two Greenpeace activists who had managed to climb onto the oil platform. A day later, armed Russian Coast Guards <clears throat> descended on Greenpeace's main ship, the Arctic Sunrise, using a helicopter and ropes. They reportedly lined up the majority of the 30 activists on board and held them at gunpoint on their knees on the ship's deck. Officials then towed the boat and its occupants to the port of Murmansk, <clears throat> where the activists were held incommunicado and questioned by investigators. On Tuesday, Russia's top investigative agency said it would prosecute the Greenpeace activists on piracy charges. If convicted, the activists could face up to 15 years in prison. On Wednesday, Russian President Vladimir Putin defended the Russian Coast Guard's decision to apprehend the Greenpeace activists. He spoke at an international conference on the Arctic. It would be better if Greenpeace representatives sat with us together in this hall and told us what they think about the problems we're discussing. They could state their complaints, demands and concerns. No one is trying to brush them aside. We gather for meetings like this specifically to discuss such problems. It's obvious they are not pirates, but they tried to storm the platform. Our security forces and border troops did not know who exactly was trying to seize the platform under the Greenpeace guys. It's obvious these people violated international law by coming dangerously close to the platform. Human rights groups have called on Russian authorities to drop the piracy charges. Amnesty International Russia director Sergei Nikitin said the activists legitimately exercised their right to peaceful protest. Piracy charges are totally fabricated and do not have any legal basis. They are absolutely baseless. We are calling on the Russian authorities to drop these charges against the Greenpeace activists who used their right to a peaceful protest. Let me stress that the activists who protested against oil drilling in the Arctic did not possess any weapons. We're joined by Kumi Naidu. He's the executive director of Greenpeace International. In 2012, he participated in a similar action against oil drilling in the Arctic. Kumi Naidu, it's great to have you in our studios here at Democracy Now. Thank you, Amy. It's good I, to be I should here. say in our lead platinum studios, yes. the highest rating you can get in Green Building. Yes. But Congratulations <clears throat> on that. Explain <laughs> to us uh, what is happening right now in the Arctic. Um, as we uh, sit now, the activists are in court. Uh, already we know that uh, five activists, two from Russia, one from Canada, New Zealand and Poland, have already been sentenced to what is euphemistically called pre-trial detention, which is basically <laughs> detention without trial, for two months. And the charges that they are being uh, investigated are actually piracy. Uh, in the words of one of the people, Denis Sinyakov, a Russian colleague who is the photographer on board, he said, the criminal activity I am blamed for is called journalism. I will continue doing it. And that captures very well what we're seeing here. This is a disproportionate use of state authority to try to silence off a very important global conversation that needs to be had. Because right now we are reaching the tipping points on climate. Uh, the Arctic serves as a refrigerator and a, a condition of the planet. And rather than seeing the retreating of the Arctic sea ice during the summer months as a warning sign that we have to get serious about climate change, sadly, Western oil companies like Exxon and uh, Shell and so on are partnering with uh, Russian state-owned companies to actually go and try to drill for the last drops of oil in this most uh, fragile, remote, and risky environment for such activities. 
And talk about the, the Russian uh, decision to begin uh, uh, exploration. Uh, uh, how recent is it, and w what are the plans in terms of uh, how extensive they, they expect it to be? The plans are pretty extensive. It is sadly a key part of the Russian government's uh, economic strategy, actually, to harness the hydrocarbons or fossil fuels in the Arctic. Uh, why this particular facility is important is that even though they have, there are many explorations going on by different companies in different parts of the Arctic, uh, this is the first actual drilling that is about to start. Well, last year, when we participated in exactly the same protest, which I was part of last year, they said they were about to start then. Our protest slowed them down by about a week, and then they suspended. So why this is significant is that this will be the beginning of a road to disaster if the drilling actually starts. So that's why we put so much of emphasis on this particular facility. So, Kumi Naidu, you did this last year already, you yourself. Uh, talk about that action you did, since you experienced it. I certainly remember, as we were talking to you, hanging off the side of the ship. Um, and so what has happened in this year? Well, in the course of this year, um, there was no charges brought against us, by the way. We were very transparent. We never hid anything. Uh, in fact, the Russian Coast Guard ship took them three days to get there. But once they got there, they just observed and they took a view that we were peaceful. And after we finished our protest, after about seven days, we sailed away peacefully, no problem. So this is a completely different approach. We don't understand. Uh, I mean, piracy, by the way, is a very big international problem as we stand today to actually bring these charges against this uh, peaceful activist is to trivialize actually the challenge that we have on de dealing with piracy and it is to uh, silence uh, resistance and the reality is I know my colleagues who uh, have pa uh, participated in this action in fact a young woman called Sini Sarela who was with us last year is the, was the first person to actually get arrested. And yesterday, the Russian Coast Guard themselves released footage of their reading of what they did. And it's horrific. Uh, you got Sini Sarela and another activist, Marco, from Switzerland, say, being yanked and while they were hanging, you know, several meters up, and they're screaming, we're coming down, we're coming down, and, you know, they were, uh, their lives were put at serious risk. And then uh, they started shooting bullets into the water close to where uh, you know the rigs were and this is really unnecessary intimidation we appeal to president putin and the uh, russian uh, people as a whole to understand that what is is at stake here is uh, not just the world's uh, future but russia is actually very much in the f firing line of climate change because of uh, permafrost and what uh, you know changes are happening uh, which will impact also heavily on the Russian people. What do you make of the, uh, on the one hand, the prosecutors saying they're going to pursue piracy uh, uh, possible charges, while President Putin says, well, obviously they weren't pirates uh, in, in, in a public forum. Uh, is this uh, uh, differences within the government or Putin just trying to uh, put on a, a good face uh, uh, to, uh, to the actions of his government? This is a really good question to put to the Russian government, who will be the only people who could answer to the authority. The speculation is that um, the, the reading is that the occupation of the ship by um, the Coast Guards when they came down uh, by helicopters happened in international waters. And that action by the Russian state was in fact illegal in terms of international law. And it might be that they are pursuing the piracy charges because that actually gives them cover from any litigation against them for an illegal act of occupying a, a ship for no good reason in international waters. That's the only speculation I've heard at the moment, but quite honestly, that's a question only the Russian authorities can answer. And Kumi, what are the U.S. plans for drilling in the Arctic? They said they're going to release um, uh, Arctic-specific drilling rules by year's end. Of course, Shell wants to drill in the Arctic. Well, uh, Shell has actually given the world a very eloquent uh, 
sort of uh, example of why it is so incredibly difficult for us to even think that it's possible to safely drill in the Arctic. Shell has blown five billion dollars of the investors money over the last two years in one fiasco after other trying to get to the point of exploration. Shell has now uh, suspended the drilling for this year to try and get the act in order. But I think that it is very misguided of President Obama and the U.S. administration to actually allow this to actually happen. Uh, to grant any licenses is essentially yet another step towards accelerating us to irreversible climate change because the consequences of drilling in this very fragile part of the world which is going to be devastating. We're going to break and then come back to our discussion. And Kumi Naidu will be joined by Jeff Masters of Weather Underground as we continue to talk about climate change. This is Democracy Now! Kumi Naidu is executive director of Greenpeace International in from South Africa. Stay with us.